The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Scottsdale, Arizona, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 34415. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new vehicle. Starting just under the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks attached to the frame rail. Moving up onto the bumper face, you'll find your unit identifier 6130. As we move to the outer edge on the driver's side, you'll find your electronic siren. Moving to the bumper extension on the passenger and driver's side is where you'll find a side-facing emergency warning light. Moving up onto the bumper extension, you'll find your turret located on the passenger side. You'll also find three tubbed storage locations for hose storage. As we move up on to the front of the vehicle, you'll find your headlight structure housing a low and high beam headlight and turn indicator. As we move to the grill, right next to the Pierce logo is where you'll find two emergency warning lights forward facing. As we move up onto the hood, you'll also find the grab handle for tilting the hood forward to gain access into the engine space. You'll also find on the driver's side the air inlet and an air horn. Moving to the outer edge just above the fender well is where you'll find a marker turn indicator. As we move to the windshield, you'll find two windshield wipers. Moving to the outer edges for your mirrors, you'll find a flat mirror on the upper portion and a convex mirror on the lower portion. As we move to the center of the vehicle, on the brow area is where you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. As we move across the brow, you'll find your clearance or running lights. And then up onto the roof of the vehicle is where you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Inside the center location of the emergency warning light bar is where you'll find your Opticom. Let's take a look at a few close-ups of the images that we just talked about. This is looking underneath at those open-ended tow hooks and also the front waterway unit identifier located across the very front of the bumper extension. As we move to the side, this is the location for your PA speaker and siren. Moving to the side, you'll find a side-facing emergency warning light. Let's take a look at the very top section of the bumper extension. This is the driver's side. You'll find a tubbed storage location and a cutout for the hose load moving to the front discharge. You'll also find a cutout to reach down inside to grab the ball valve handle for opening and closing the discharge valve. Let's move across the front area. We'll find the center location. Dry deck material inside, D-handle will gain access. Also, as we move to the passenger side, D-handle will gain access, dry deck material inside. Quick shot of the bumper turret. As we move to the front grille on the right and left side, you'll find your headlight structure housing the low and high beam headlights. Into the center grille area, you'll find forward facing emergency warning lights. Directly above the Freightliner logo is where you'll find the pull handle, air inlet, air horn, turn indicator, Alcoa wheels, Michelin tires, Looking at the back section near the A-pillar is where you'll find the release mechanism for the hood. There is one on the passenger and also on the driver's side. You'll also find this red indicator indicating front turret must be removed before opening the hood. Quick view of the mirrors. Once again, flat on the upper portion, convex on the lower portion. Your vehicle is equipped with keyed entry and also grab handles at all points of entry for accessing in and out of the cab. Let's move to the driver's step area where you'll find your fuel tank, which is the silver tank. It contains ultra low sulfur diesel and it has the silver cap. As we move to the right, you'll find the black tank, which has a blue cap. That is your def tank. 
As we move just under the cab area, you'll find LED lights for your step lights and perimeter lighting. As we move to the driver's door area on the door panel, you'll find all of our safety and warning information in addition with this yellow placard manufactured for your department from Pierce Manufacturing. It has the date of information as far as the year it was manufactured, the five digit DOB number, cold tire inflation, gross vehicle weight rating. It has all of the fluid and fluid capacities and type for your vehicle. Let's move just up from this location to the window area where you'll find the door locks and mirror controls. You'll also find this black placard indicating the height of the vehicle, 10 feet, two inches, the length, 26 feet, three inches, and a gross vehicle weight rating of 35,000 pounds. You'll also find the five digit job number. As we move to the section just below the seat area is where you'll find your master battery switch. You'll also find comfort controls for air ride on your seat. As we move to the forward section, you'll find a keyed ignition about the left knee of the operator. As we move down to the lower console, you'll find audible alarms. Those will have a bezel around the outer edge which will allow you to dampen or brighten the sound. As we move down to the floorboard, you'll find your master battery switch. These are the comfort controls on the driver's seat. And as we look down into the lower section in the front, this is the seat from front to back. Moving down, you'll find once again those audible speakers. The outer edge of that bezel will allow you to dampen the sound. You'll also find the VMEX diagnostic port. This is for your service personnel. As we move to the dash area, you'll find at the very top your speed control for cruise control, set, excel, and resume your headlights down at the lower section and increase or decrease for lighting. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dash. We'll start on the left side of the dash with the transmission temperature, water temperature, and oil pressure. Moving to the right, you'll find front and rear air pressure and a combination gauge housing your def tank and also fuel tank. In the center, you'll find your tachometer and speedometer there is diagnostic information which will display above the tachometer and speedometer. As we move to the right, just as a point of reference, this is your filter miner for the engine air filter. Let's move to the next image where we'll start once again with the filter miner on the upper left hand corner. Moving downward, you'll find your Allison transmission pad with a digital readout. It is a push button style transmission pad. To the right, you'll find front and rear window controls for your electric windows. You'll also find the pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. It is the yellow diamond in the center. As we move to the right, you'll find your mirror heat, engine brake, increase or low range or high range, all wheel drive, your power outlets for USB and also barrel style door locks, and your regen switch. Moving down to the lower section is where you'll find your climate control for heat and air conditioning. Let's move to the center console. A lot of items within this area. We'll start first at the very top with some tally lights. We have indicator lights and also emergency red lights indicating an action required. For example, do not move truck. You may have a door or compartment open. As we move downward, you'll find the front turret control module, emergency lights, air horn. Moving further down to the next set of switches, you'll find your main pump in addition with work lights. As we move to the upper right hand side, you'll find your Whelan siren and also PA speaker system. Just beneath that, you'll find the rear traffic advisor. Moving down to the lower left, you'll find an electric prime button, which will allow you to prime your pump from inside the cab. Also a digital readout for the pump pressure. Moving to the right, you'll find a LED water tank level indicator. And then further to the right, you'll find your pressure controller. Let's take a look at some close-ups of the items we just talked about. The very top section, once again, was the turret. Just beneath that area, you'll find storage location for map books or gloves. Overhead, you'll find additional storage over each driver space and also your backup camera. 
As we move to the outer section, you'll find a step location. D handle will gain access into a large area under this space. In addition, with your auto charge system, when plugged into shore power, the auto charge will indicate the battery level. This is an auto eject plug. Here's some close ups of those items that we just talked about. Let's move to the rear section of the cab into the crew area. We'll start first on each door panel, all of our safety and warning information. The rear seats are also air ride. There is comfort control and directly behind the lower section, you'll find your battery charging system. You'll also find 12 volt access via barrel style and USB. These happen to be USB style in the rear. Also, you'll find rear air conditioning control. Let's go ahead and move to the exterior of the vehicle into the rear cab of portion. This is directly to the rear of the cab is where you'll find your booster line or red line. The tension spool is at the very top. And then also this is a foam capable discharge. As we look to the under section of the step area, you'll find LED lights indicating your pump lights and also pump engaged. In the upper left hand corner, you'll find your pump discharge. This is the master gauge. And then just beneath that, you'll find your pump intake gauge, which is also your master gauge. To the right, you'll find two indicators, one for water and the other for foam level. Moving just to the right, you'll find an audible alarm. Once again, the outer edge of that bezel does allow you to dampen sound. And then to the right, you'll find a green tally indicator ending, indicating OK to pump. Moving down just from that location, you'll find your Husky 3 foam system specifications. And then to the right, you'll find a hour meter for your pump. Moving down to the left, you'll find your pressure throttle governor. If illuminating, it will be a check engine light in yellow in the upper left hand corner. A digital readout for the RPMs. Moving to the right, if illuminated, it would be red in color is a stop engine indicator. As we move down from this location to the left, you'll find your menu button, which will allow you to scroll through the various functions of your pressure throttle governor. Engine diagnostic information will display in the center area along with a red silence button allowing you to silence any audible alarms that may be sounding from your pressure throttle governor. There are two options either pressure mode or RPM mode. These are the two blue buttons on the left. Menu information will display in the digital readout. We have a confirmation here for OK to engage the throttle. The throttle is ready. It is a green indicator. And just beneath that, you'll also find a green preset, which allows you to preset any RPMs or pressure positions. The throttle is going to be the large dial, right to increase, left to decrease, push in the center and the idle to move to idle position. To the right, you'll find your pressure controller. It is the gray module. There are specific instructions on that module. And then to the right, the Husky foam system. The green indication is the on off, a digital readout, increase or decrease in gray and a prime button. The module does have instructions for operation. We also have a panel light and also a real rewind. Let's move down from this position. We'll find a few more items for starting on the left with your number one cross lay. It is foam capable. As we move to the right, you'll find your Husky 3 foam system instructions. And then moving further to the right, you'll find your real discharge. Further to the right, your electric prime. There is also a caution information label here that at least 1000 RPMs for best practices while conducting a prime. As we move further down to the lower left hand side of the image, you'll find your engine cooler. It is a twist, same as the real discharge, not a pull. Moving further down, vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. They are currently plugged and are for testing purposes. To the right, you'll find your tank fill recirculating line and also your tank to pump in is the open position. As we move to the placard here from Pierce, this is for your test pressures for 150, 200 and 250 PSI. On the left is the associated GPM and on the right are the RPM. Just down from that location, you'll find your master intake and moving further to the right, we've got a warning label here regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move further down, we have an additional warning placard here not to mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. We do have a pan door located here for gaining access behind the panel and then also an air shutoff and air inlet outlet. 
Moving down to the left, you'll find the driver's side auxiliary inlet. This is a two and a half inch female inlet. And then to the right, you'll find your foam tank fill location. And further to the right, you'll find the number one driver's side discharge. This is a two and a half inch discharge. Moving just under the diamond plated step area is where you'll find a few drains. Let's start on the far left hand side with the master drain and then all of your individual foam and also manifold and driver side auxiliary inlets drains in the lower section. As we move to the body now at the upper right hand corner of the image is where we're going to start with our LED water tank level indicator, a side facing scene light at the very rear of the apparatus emergency warning light. As we move down just over the rear axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage in front of and also in rear of the axle. We have some images of those doors in the open position and we'll go over those in a few moments. As we move down just to the rear of the axle, you'll also find an additional storage location next to the emergency warning light side facing rear. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups of the items that we just talked about. First in the upper left hand corner of the image, water tank level indicator and also side facing flood. As we move to the rear, you'll find an emergency warning light at the rear of the vehicle. As we move down into the uh, section in front of the rear axle, you'll find SCBA storage location. Moving to the rear, additional storage location. This is just to the rear of the axle. Down at the lower section of the compartment, you'll find an additional SCBA bottle storage location. Moving to the very rear of the axle, you'll find mud flaps. Moving back to the compartments, this is directly over the rear axle, you'll find two black mechanisms which will allow you to release the drawer and it will also tilt in a downward position. As we move to the rear, you'll find once again a tilt downward adjustable shelves and also an adjustable tray. The release mechanism is on the lower right hand side. Let's go from this position to the rear of the apparatus. We'll identify items within the rear section of your apparatus, first starting with the lower section on the passenger and driver's side. This does drop down to gain access for your steps. You'll find your emergency brake, turn, and reverse lights. As we move to the very center, you'll find a spare tire located in the very center. As we move to the outer edge, you'll find the spare indicator. You'll also find two tow hooks located on the rear section. Moving up from this location, there are two discharges, one on the left side and also a smaller on the right side. Directly in the center, you'll find a warning label regarding pressure hazard. Be cautious, caps may be under pressure while opening them. Also, you'll find a direct tank fill located in the center. And then moving to the far right, you'll find a backpack fill location. It is a quarter turn for the fill position. Let's take a look at some close-ups of the items we just talked about. First, starting on the upper left, we have a rear-facing scene light. As we move just to the right of that location, we'll find a rear-facing LED water tank level indicator, and then some warning labels here regarding entanglement hazard because of those lines coming from aloft. Do not ride on the vehicle for the possibility of falling off, and also when climbing on the vehicle, you should face the vehicle while climbing. As we move to the upper portion, we have an additional storage in the upper left and right-hand side and additional hose storage in the center area and on the right side, in addition with a backup camera at the very top near the Pierce logo. Just underneath that Pierce logo is where you'll find your traffic advisor. Moving to the center compartment, you'll find an adjustable shelf just beneath the traffic advisor. Let's move back up to the upper right hand corner where you'll find a hose divider also on the right and left side. You have a three section extension ladder steps for gaining access to go aloft, and then also a lower section step that drops down to position so you can gain access to those steps. Quick side view of the vehicle, same configuration and layout when it comes to compartments. As we look to the lower section, you'll find that compartment in the cross lay portion in the lower rear of the axle, which contains your SCBA bottle storage, and then also a emergency warning light side facing at the rear. We also have a compartment shelf and also a pull-out tray in the lower portion. The release mechanism is on the lower right hand side of that tray and it will lock into position. As we move over this compartment is where you'll find that side facing emergency warning light 
same configuration and layout as the driver's side. As we move from this location, we'll identify a few items with the compartments in the open position to make it a little easier. Wheel chalk storage, SCBA storage. In the very center compartment, you'll find a tool board. D handle will gain access to the back side of it. There's also a locking tab in the hinge side, which will lock into position. You will need to lift that to be able to restore your tool board to the closed position. As we look downward, you're also gonna find your wheels in the back, Alcoa rims and Michelin tires. As we move forward to this location, you'll find your diesel exhaust. You'll find extreme hot diesel exhaust temperatures. Be cautious where you park your vehicle. Let's move up to the body of the vehicle at the very top sections where you'll find once again side facing LED water tank level indicator and a side facing scene light. As we move now to the midsection, same configuration and layout when it comes to your pump panel and hose exiting. We do have a long storage door on the left hand side of the image. As we move to the panel itself, you'll find a lift and turn latch will gain access behind the pump panel. Let's take a look now at the items on this side of the pump panel. We'll start in the upper left hand corner, first starting with your water strainer. As we move downward from this location, you have a number two cross lay. It is water foam capable and also the location for your dead lay. As we move downward, you'll find the placard regarding Darley 1000 GPM pump. And then also down at the very bottom left, you'll find your real rewind push button and also a warning indication here regarding pressure hazard. Once again, caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening those caps. As we move down, you'll find your number two drain. It is a twist, not a pull. And as we move further down, you'll find the passenger side two and a half inch auxiliary female inlet. Underneath, you'll find your passenger side auxiliary inlet drain. And then let's go ahead and move to the forward section here of the cab. Once again, same configuration and layout. Let's start at the very base of it. You'll find perimeter lighting just underneath your step locations. As we move up, you'll find a significant storage. This is under the rear cab position. You'll also find as we move inside the cab, you'll find the two seats located. They are also air ride seats in the rear. Once again, affixed to all the door panels, we'll have all of our safety and warning information. And the quick view here of the lower section of the seats, you can see they are currently air ride seats. Quick view inside, you have the USB charging location and also air conditioning unit. As we move to the forward section here, you'll find perimeter lighting and step lighting just under the cab. As we move inside into the officer space, you'll find your vehicle data recording port and also an air ride seat for the officer position. Let's go ahead and look overhead in the cab area. You'll find at the very top section, two locations for storage, also center reading lights, and in the very center, you'll find the backup camera. As we move to the front, you'll find Alcoa wheels, Michelin tires. As we move upward from that location, we'll find the release mechanism for the hood, also an indication that you should make sure that the monitor has been removed prior to tilting the hood. Moving to the very front of the vehicle, just a general view here of the passenger side. Let's move up to the roof area or rear storage area. All of your storage is currently covered. You do have D handles, which will gain access, LED lighting inside. As we move through the compartments, a little difficult to point all of them out, but they are ventilated and also uh, can withstand a weight of a person on top of those sections. As we move to the dunnage area, you'll find your booster line located on the Driver's side, as we move to the passenger side, you'll find some warning information here that you should not step within these areas. And then also your Husky foam system reservoir located on the far right hand side. There is a sight gauge and also a drain shutoff. As we move to the cab top, you'll find your unit identifier. And then as we move to the very rear section, once again, you'll find in, enclosed in the storage location, your tank A foam fill location and water tank back on the foam. We do have a warning label here. Do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. Congratulations, Scottsdale, Arizona, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 34415. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. 
Thank you and congratulations.